Well, I'm glad God's got the great prayer up. Well, I appreciate everybody that took play last night. Amen. I enjoyed every bit of that. Now, if you watched the play last night, it's a blessing. Amen. And why I enjoyed it, like, I enjoyed it even better. Amen. Because that was my, that was my daddy's girlfriend last night. Amen. 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 Been praying for her for years. Amen. <coughs> they go to church over and wish. Why? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad the Lord can make a difference. Amen. 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 He can do something nobody else do. Amen. Amen. I'm glad he can. I think he's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Well, I, 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 I thought I was reading these verses. And just bear with us, if you look God gave me, I'm going to sit down. Amen. I don't have no outline. Seems like you're late, I just ain't got none. Amen. I, I don't study, but I've been studying. Begging God what to give me, but man, I just, I just assume there's like no way to get into an outline. Amen. So I'm going to give what God gave me. But I'm all about the altar. There's some powerful things have to wrap it all. Amen. I'm going to wrap the altar we have today. Thank God for powerful things that have to wrap it all. And if you're here this morning, and you've got saved that all, but I promise you, that place is important to you. It means something to you. Amen. Why, I'll never forget, I didn't get saved that all, but I made an altar where I was. Amen. I got saved in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Halfway up in one of the hotel room steps. I called on God, gave him all I had. Said, God, I'm good, I'm through. I don't want to go to hell. I said, save my soul. God, please change my life. Boy, save me. I'm in steps, change my whole life. And I ain't never forgot that. Amen. Never have forgot. I ain't walk up steps now. Boy, it's good. I remember taking that step on that step and calling on God to be different. Amen. It couldn't happen no other way. Mama said, y'all the big brother clubs and wilderness camps and uh, trying to get me a big brother and trying to get me somebody to be my daddy. Well, I'm glad that when nobody else seemingly can help me, there's a God in heaven that can help me. Amen. Amen. Wait till you have that night when you get up around the altar or you made an altar around your sofa or an altar wherever you was praying and you call on God, God say, Amen. It means something when you get saved. It means something when you call on God and make a place to be your place of prayer. It means something. Back in the Old Testament, I'm just going to take time to give you all of it. Amen. Uh, but by, by, back in the Old Testament, they made all sacrifices. When you come in that tabernacle, the tabernacle of the Old Testament is a picture of Jesus. It talked about who Jesus was. And everything on, if you look at the outside of that tabernacle, it was wrapped up in badger skins. It'd be like our church today, but it had badger skins on the top of it, as the Bible said, and ram skins underneath it. But man, if you read, if you read that, if you look on the outside, it would be really ugly. Because it'd be like a gray color. If I was reading that thought, you know, from the outside of Jesus, he didn't really look like a whole lot, really, honestly. He looked like another man as far as, as far as looking at the Lord Jesus. You would have thought he was just as anybody else. But if you could see what was there on the inside, I believe you'd say, there ain't nobody like him. Amen. And the Bible talks about saying he was full of grace and he's full of truth. I believe on the outside he may not have shown his glory. But when you get down where he was, there on the inside of Lord Jesus was the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But on that tabernacle, when you first walk that tabernacle, there always had to be a sacrifice for sin. The Bible said the ways of sin is dead. Payment for sin, something had to die. Something had to die. Or, 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 or you're doomed for hell. Something had to die. And the Old Testament, they looked forward to the Lord Jesus Christ. And put faith that one day the Lord Jesus would come and pay the sin debt and shed his own precious blood and they'd be saved. Amen. You read Isaiah. Isaiah said that one day a virgin would conceive and have a baby. And they'd call his name Emmanuel. And they did. He was God with them. Amen. He was God. Amen. In the flesh. But they looked forward to it. And they shed the blood of a goat. They shed the blood of an animal to cover their sin for the year at the Day of Atonement. And they go away, and the next year, all that sin that they got forgiven for will be brought all back up all over again. And then they'd have to go to that tabernacle again, and they, when you walk in the front door, there's only one door in the tabernacle. And by the way, they were one way to heaven either. Amen. I, I, I don't mean it very meanly, but there ain't a bunch of ways to glory. Amen. Somebody said, preacher, that's very dogmatic. Hey, hallelujah, call it dogmatic. I'm going to tell you, able one way. And a preacher won't tell you, able one way. He ain't worth his weight, son. Amen. If he let the world go to hell and not care, then he ain't worth nothing. Amen. I ain't worth a whole lot. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, there's a hell 
I heard old King the other day, he was back into a corner. And they said the statement, he said, he said, man, he said, there's many ways to Jesus, but only one way to follow. What an ignorant, ignorant, ignorant statement. What that is, is a preacher that loves a paycheck more than he loves God. Amen. That's a preacher that don't want the Bible to be the Bible to be shared. He don't, he don't really care. He ain't really concerned about the judgment seat as he is the brethren. Amen. I, I love the brethren, but I, I really don't care if I please the brethren or not. Be honest with you. Amen. I love our men. I love our ladies. But I believe y'all be with me. I, I, you want me to do the same thing I'm trying best to do. Amen. They go one way to heaven. They go one way. Boy, that Old Testament, they, they said blood after blood after blood. On that burnt altar, that brazen altar where that blood was shed. Well, over and over and over again, blood was shed on that altar. But then I got to read and look at your Bible. Hebrews 10, look at verse 1. Look what it said for the law. Have a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never do those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers their own good purpose. This, as far as God was concerned, he could still see their sin every year. And as far as God was concerned, that sacrifice was not enough. All it was was to show they was looking for one day the Lord Jesus Christ to come. Amen. And die on Calvary. Amen. They shed his blood and die for us. Amen. I believe that wholeheartedly. Amen. And they put faith in God. Amen. And then one day they put faith in the fact that he is coming. You read Genesis 3 15. The Bible said that, that one day the enemy was going to have his head bruised by the sea, which was a he, the Bible said, said he shall bruise his head. Amen. Talking about that sake. Amen. Already the Bible is declaring one's coming who's going to give the victory. One's on his way who's going to give the victory. In the New Testament screens, he already came and he's coming again. Amen. He already came and he's coming one more time. Amen. Old Testament hollers out, he's a coming, he's coming, he's coming. One's coming who ain't nobody like him. And one's coming who will pay the sin debt. And New Testament Christ, he done came and paid it. And he's coming again to come and collect what he paid for. Yeah, yeah man. Right, well, I'm glad for it. Amen. 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 Verse number one. He said this. Verse number two. For the, then would they not have sins to be offered. Let me say this. He looked at verse number 12. But this man. He's different than the rest of them people that come to offer an offer. Bible said he's different than a couple in place one. I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts and I'm going to be done. But I thought about one way he's different than any of the rest of them is, is the amount of offerings he did. He's different than the amount of offerings that he did. This is what he said. But this man, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice <coughs> for sins, but I thought about the offer this morning. First of all, the word altar means an elevated place. If you know what the Bible says, the Bible said they lifted him up and hung him on a cross. He, he, he died and hung up. The Bible said over in John 3 that he must be lifted up. So if he's lifted up, he draw all men unto himself. And this, I believe that's talking about Calvary. I will tell you this, I believe the people of God will get rejoicing and excited about who God was and elevated him and praising him and glorifying him. If it let you put a taste in the world's mouth, hey, the one we got swallowed the fall, have they nothing like being yeah. saved? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will let the world know that happiness don't come out of a bottle. Yeah. It don't come out of a crack pipe. It don't yeah. come out of drugs. It don't come out of public bills. Yeah. It comes out of grace. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. I don't try the rest of it, boy. I like God a whole lot better. I can wake up in the morning and then Rose like, know what I did last night. I ain't got no doubt this morning where I was at, what I was doing, where I've been. I know where I've been. And I enjoy all of it. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, this world ain't got much to offer, but God has a whole lot to offer. I can lay my head down in peace of mind. And know without any doubt in my mind, 
If I die while I'm sleeping, I know Miss Connie, if I die right here, a heart attack in the middle of preaching, if I die with a heart attack, and before my body, before the dust settles and my body hits the ground, my soul will be in heaven with Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm that sure of it. You say, preacher, is it because you're a preacher? No. He says it because you read your Bible, no. Says it because that you go to church and have nothing to do with none of that. It has to do with that night. But I realized I was bankrupt and I had nothing to offer God. I couldn't give him anything, but all I could hand him was a bunch of broken mess and give him what I had. He saved me. He took my broken mess and forgave me.
going to come that place. Well, there's only one sacrifice for sin. It ain't by good works. It is not by good deeds. Listen, I shake your hand. You come here, sworn. I love everybody in here. I shake your hand. I want to be shaking my hand and get you nowhere. I read somewhere the other day where the Pope said, if you tweet him, if you tweet him, you get extra privileges to get into glory. You can miss out on purgatory. And if you read up on it, see if I'm alive. God help us. You tweet me, first of all, you tweet me all day. You ain't going to catch me. I don't tweet, man. And make a way too much work to get done. They can tweet anybody. Amen. I'm trying to go do something for God. I'm trying to work on the job. They ain't got no time to tweet nobody, friend. I'm sorry. You won't call my phone. I'll answer call as long as you want to. Amen. But I'm not a tweeter. I'm not. Who's the one? What the 
who's the most wonderful in here? Who's the most popular? He ain't concerned about what I don't know about it. What God's concerned with this morning is are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? And this all probably this be. This all probably this be. Jesus came over across that with the altar. That's where the offering's being made. Man had made his own offering by the lambs and by the goats and by the rams, but now God was making his offering. You remember in Genesis 22, Isaac and Abraham walked up the side of the mountain? That God made a prophetic statement right in the middle of it. He said, God himself, God shall provide himself a way for the burnt offering. He said, Preacher, what's that mean? I believe in one thing that he was going to take Isaac's place. I believe you look forward in time and say, God Himself, God Himself, the Holy God of Heaven, came down the body of Lord Jesus Christ and died on Calvary for sin. God put His offering on the altar. God put the offering on the altar. Boy, I like it. Amen. Hey, and listen, not just that. Let me give you this. Every other offering that ever been put on the altar always stayed on the altar. Amen. Every offering ever put on the altar, stay on the altar. Say why? Because they cut it a million pieces. They laid it on that altar. And then, after they laid it on that altar, they would burn it alive. <coughs> Listen, Jesus died on the cross, and he was all the way dead when he, when he was gone. He did die all the way. Amen. He didn't go to a partial coma. He didn't go in a halfway dead state and come back out. No, he died all the way. The Bible said they pierced his side with that spear. And if you read even in medical terms, they said if you pierced that heart the way they did, you'd have to die. There's no way around it. You would die. There's no way to get around it. You'd die. But as he hung on that cross dead, there lays God's offering on the altar. Man can't do it by his own words. Jesus said, it is finished. I've done all the work. Here it is. Here's my offering for your sin, for your soul, for your salvation, for you to be saved, for you to have grace. Here's my offering. Here's what I'm giving. <laughs> Listen, there wasn't nobody else making the offering. He was the high priest. And he was the one offering him on himself. He's the first offering that had ever been the same high priest. The high priest used to would crucify, or not going to kill the lambs and kill the rams. But now this great and holy high priest is not killing the lamb. He's not killing the ram. He's led his own life on this altar, on the cross of Calvary, at an elevated place. And he lets them down into that altar and gives all that he's got on that altar. I'm going to tell you one thing here about this altar. But any other offer you read about the Bible, every other, every lamb that ever got killed died on them. And never did get back up. Every lamb that ever died, died, and they never did get back up. And every, every dove ever got laid on an altar. When they got killed, they didn't get back up. But on this altar that was elevated and that was built, boy, they crucified him. They made him shed his own blood. He laid his life down freely out of his own will. He said, I, I lay it down on my own power. I got power to lift it back up. Amen. I'm glad that he ain't dead this morning and in a grave. I said during, during, during the way it started, there's a lot of people not scared of a baby Jesus. Because what can a baby do? They're not scared of a dead Jesus. Because what can a dead man do? But the faith that a holy God died and got back up and sits on the throne and we await judgment at the throne of God, that's a scary thought. To know that he's alive, it's also a blessing of the name of him. And listen, I heard this song the other day. They said, look about how depressed the disciples was and how depressed Mary was. But then they told me, here's what it was. It got that chorus. I like what it said. It said, Mary, come along. This is what she said. But I talked to him today, and my cares all fell away. And he made me feel like life had just begun. He 
facing all of my trials could be turned into triumph through the victory that he's already won. Well, I'm glad that when he died, he got back up. I believe Mary, when she went back, I believe she's saying, well, boys, I know it's sad. I know it seems depressing. Hey, she said, well, time out. Time out. Hold everything. I just talked to him just a minute ago. Right there at the tomb, he's still alive. He got up. Oh man, I've heard people say this in prison. I don't know how many times. I went to juvenile prison, preaching in prison. Boys tell me, what if you're wrong? I'll tell you something, if I am wrong, I have lived a wonderful life. It's been so good just to be saved. You say, preacher, if you're wrong, I don't believe I am this morning. I believe I'm correct as it should be, not because of who I am, because can't nobody else do what God did in my life. Nobody can. Amen. I'm going to tell you this, but you say, Preacher, what are you wrong, buddy? I'm not a piece of the soul this morning. I'm God in my life this morning. I got everything just going real. God's been good to me. Does everything rosy and wonderful all the time? Absolutely not. But He's always right there beside me, and He don't never leave me. He's always right there close by. I call out to Him for help. You say, Preacher, what if you're wrong? Let me ask you a question. If you're not saved here, what if you're wrong? <laughs> Say, preacher, what if you're on to ask your question? What if you're wrong? Listen, I messed out nothing if I'm wrong. You say, preacher, what if you're wrong? And I don't think that we are. But what if you're wrong? And I'm not messing out anything. But if you are wrong this morning, and you sit here and you're not saved, you missed out on everything. You missed out on it all. You'll miss out on heaven. You'll die and go to hell. You'll live in eternity in a place called hell where you'll burn and scream to all eternity. Why? I, I, I'm saying this morning, you say, preacher, if you're wrong, I missed out on nothing. But if you are, then you missed out on it all. On everything life's got to offer you. Well, I'd hate to be wrong. Well, I man said this. I love this statement. Eternity is way too long to be wrong. Right. You hear me? Eternity is way too long to be wrong. Right. I'll be honest with you. Not just the fact that somebody believes in God, but if you sit here and you're religious and you're playing the game and trying to fool other people and trying to mess around and act like everything's okay. I'm going to tell you that one day it's too long to try to fool somebody. It's too long to be burned in hell to try to fool somebody. It's too long to worry about it. I'll be honest with you this morning. If we realized how bad hell was, we wouldn't care who was watching. We wouldn't care who was around. We wouldn't care who was looking. No friend would matter. Nobody beside us, in front of us, behind us would even matter. They, they wouldn't even matter. We'd come to an altar and get saved by the grace of God. Not wondering what everybody else thought. If we could just see how bad hell is. Oh, we could just see how bad hell really was. Well, if we could, it help us. I'll be honest with you, Chris, it didn't help us. If you're here and you're saved, it helped you to know how bad hell really is. Because it makes you realize your families are going, your friends are going, co-workers are going, people you love are going to hell. Right. Well, I saw last night, my dad and my stepmom, I've been praying for a long time. Four to five years I've been praying, my stepmom gets saved. Well, I, I love my family. I want to see God change my whole family. I appreciate God being good to me. He don't have to do anything for me. I, I did last night so I'm missing God. Why in the world? Would you even want to do anything like you're doing in my life? You've been so good to me. I, I'm not saying to tell you about anything. I'm telling you he's been so good to me. I don't deserve any of it in this morning. I don't deserve the Holy Ghost presence of God. Come by and talk to me and let me know he loves me. I don't deserve it. By the way, you don't either. Right. We don't deserve it this morning. So, we say it's for finish off. He sat down. They were one offer. Every other offer they had, they didn't get back up. They all died. But let's say this it's a finished offer. You go to that tabernacle, that high priest had to work every day on that. He grabbed the offering, had to raise it up. He
He can lay out an altar. He can slice it in pieces like it's supposed to be. He can light that fire and burn that offering. And then after that, he goes to lay. He washes up, the water on his hands, on his clothes, on his feet. He get himself all cleaned up. We went inside the holy, holy place. We went inside the holy place. He some that ready to be nourishment. He go over here where the candlestick was. And do his job, do his work. And then he got over here where that altar of incense was. And that was a place of prayer. And then one time every year he could walk around the veil that comes between that, that altar of incense and the holy of holies. That place where God put his holy presence at. He walked down there and he said he took that blood in that basin and he fling that blood on that mercy seat. And that blood on that mercy seat meant that all the sins of all of Israel was forgiven that entire year. He throw that blood on that altar. But all that is, but you never find a place where he sat down. There's one furniture piece you'll never find in the tabernacle, and that's a chair. Look all over the tabernacle. You don't find a chair anywhere. There's not a place to sit down. There's not a place to rest. They were going to rest and had to go back to the house. So there's no place inside the work of God being done. Day and night, priests are inside that holy place and inside the holy of holies. And they were on that altar, that brazen altar. They were always working and never stopping. Because everybody was always sinning. And everybody was always lost. Everybody was always condemned. So they had to keep throwing blood on the mercy seat. And blood on the mercy seat. And blood on the brazen altar. And they had to keep putting up incense of the glory. They had to keep doing it every day. All day. There was never time they could ever just say, Lord, I'm glad the work is... They could never do that. But Jesus offered one sacrifice for sin, and he got back up. And let me say this morning, the Bible said in that verse, that he sat down on the right hand of God. Say, which way you say it? I'm saying that everything salvation's got to have has already been done. You say, preacher, if I gotta get saved and then join the church, no, not to get saved, you don't. Do I gotta get saved and begin to read my Bible for No, you don't. Do I gotta get saved, you don't. You say, preacher, I gotta, do I gotta, do I gotta start doing that? Not really, honestly, no. I mean, you will because God saves your life. You can't, because somebody's biggest God moving, He's gonna make a difference. Yeah, amen. But at the same time, you ain't gotta change to be saved. You just gotta realize that you, that you gotta come to a place you're willing to repent. You're sorry for what you've done. Sorry for sin. Sorry for the sins that you committed. And just come to God guilty. Throw your hands up, God. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I ain't talking about everybody else. I don't know what everybody else has done. I don't know what all they've done, but I know me. And I'm guilty. Well, I like that verse they sat down. Listen, you ain't got to do nothing this morning. I'm the honest way to go to hell. You don't have to do nothing if you're not saved. Just sit there just like you are. If you're not saved, just sit there just like you are this morning. And you've done, you've you already on your way to hell. I'm mean, asking. Say, so preacher, that is blunt and honest. Now, listen, would you rather have a preacher get up here and tell you that everything's wonderful and everything's flowery and everything is great? And then let you die and go to hell and you're not even care about your soul at all. Preach, brother. Preach, brother. Preach. Would you rather have me sit there and smile the whole time? <laughs> and, not, and not even bother you at all? Say, so preach, don't bother me. Don't bother me. At least I know what that's like. I know what it's like to sit here. What look at that problem? <laughs> I'm going to miss this part. I've done with this. I have heard this so many times. I've done hearing it. Done hearing it. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because you ain't never got down in here. If you only got up here, you're going to get tired of hearing it. You're going to get tired of hearing about the gospel. You're going to get tired of hearing about God. Because you're missing heaven by 18 inches. From your head to your heart. If it's all it is up here, you know Jesus. And you know it, you know his history. You know who he is. You know about his stories. You know about his parables. You've been taught church a long time. But you never got it down in here. You'll die and go to hell. Yes, and have my 18 inches in your life. Because you'd be that close down here. Completely missing up there. You'd be under conviction this morning and be so close to get saved. But you're completely lost when you look at the 
So close to saying, God, I win. Look up that way. Here are all of you. God help us this morning. You're standing with your eyes closed, head back, I'm like off the One sacrifice. He got up. <laughs>